Vlog 1. Skills versus capacities in the weight room. The focus of this vlog is to analyse the back squat and deadlift and identify whether or not the breakdown to the technical model is due to a skill or capacity issue. Messages to take from the vlog. Skill based issues can be corrected with cues and feedback mechanisms. After skill issues are addressed, it will take time to develop new stable attractor states. Further investigation should be undertaken before suggesting any corrective interventions. First we'll look at the squat with a capacity issue. A capacity issue is a limitation in movement quality due to the lack of stability, mobility, strength or restriction caused by anthropometrics. Upon analysing the rear view of the squat, the athlete adopts a stance where their centre of mass is shifted to the left hand side. Starting from the ground up, we notice that the athlete starts with a greater external rotation of the right foot in comparison to the left. As the athlete descends into the bottom of the squat, we see pronation of both feet. And this could be due to the length of ankle dorsiflexion. Moving up the chain, we notice that knee bag is a course in the ascent phase of the lift. This could be caused by the pronation of the feet or issues around the hip. The last issue to address from the rear view is that the athlete shows a noticeable hip shift to the left hand side. This may be due to a mobility imbalance, a strength deficit or a motor control issue. Upon analysing the athlete from the side view, we notice that the athlete adopts a hip dominant squatting pattern. This could be due to a lack of capacity or a skill issue. But after analysing the rear view of the squat, there is evidence to suggest that the lack of ankle dorsiflexion could be the leading cause to this movement pattern. So, as the athlete fails to achieve adequate anterior knee translation, the athlete has compensated by increasing the forward lean of the trunk, as seen here. In doing so, the athlete is increasing the load through that lumbar region. Further investigation will be needed to assess the limiting factors which is leading to the athlete to adopt this movement pattern. Here we see the athlete lack the ankle dorsiflexion to reach the wall from 3 inches away. In raising the athlete's heels by 30 degrees, the athlete now adopts a knee dominant movement pattern. This allows the athlete to achieve adequate depth and maintain an upright posture. As the athlete now is able to explore more depth in the squat, we notice a small tucking motion at the bottom of our movement. We assessed the athlete's active straight leg raise, and from here we can see that she achieves full range of motion. Looking closer at the hip, we found little to no imbalances in mobility. After ruling out that mobility was not the issue for the hip shift, next we assessed the athlete's strength capabilities of her hip extensors. We noticed here that in the single leg glute bridge hold, the athlete fails to achieve full hip extension. As the athlete continues to hold, we notice that the hips drop even further. After exposing the athlete's strength deficit of the hip extensors on the right hand side, we then assess the athlete's capabilities of controlling the pelvis during a single leg eccentric box squat. We notice here that during the single leg box squat on the left hand side, the athlete has relatively good control as she descends onto the box. As the athlete performs the eccentric box squat on the right hand side, there is considerable knee valgus. This is where the issue of the hip shift to the left hand side occurs. Two interventions have been suggested to improve the movement pattern in the squat. The athlete has been suggested to complete some foam rolling, add in some banded joint mobilization to reduce restriction of the joint and to lower the end range of the movement. The second intervention is to improve the strength capabilities of the athlete's hip extensor muscles. Here the athlete is performing an internal external rotation clam with the objective of strengthening the glute med to improve the athlete's ability to stabilize the pelvic region during the squat. Single leg hip thrusters have been given to address the strength imbalance in the hip extensors. Then the athlete was given a split squat hold with a band of distraction to strengthen the glute med and to help the athlete stabilize at the ankle knee and hip during flexion. Next, we will look at the squat with a skill issue. The skill issue is a motor control limitation, which could be due to the lack of familiarity with the movement or a previous capacity issue leading to a dysfunctional movement pattern. We see as the athlete completes her first squat, there is a noticeable hip shift to the right hand side. But during the second and third rep, the athlete is able to maintain pelvic control and remain centered. This inconsistency through the squatting movement suggests that the athlete has a skill issue and not a capacity issue. Analyzing the athlete's squat from the side view, we notice that the athlete initiates the squat with her knees. 
as the athlete exhausts full ankle range of motion early in the squat. She fails to achieve adequate depth. Due to the excessive anterior knee drive, this could be causing increased forces at the knee and ankle joints. Further investigation was undertaken to ensure that we were not dealing with a capacity issue. And as seen here, the athlete exhibits excellent mobility of the ankle, hamstring and hip. Following this, the athlete performed rack assisted squats with the instructions to reach back with her hips. This helped the athlete break at the knee and hip at the same time, removing any excess anterior knee drive, causing any strain on the knee and ankle joint. Progressing on, the athlete performed a counter movement squat. In her initial rep, you will notice that the athlete adopts her previous squatting form, initiating the squat at the knees. The athlete was cued to drive the hips back, helping the athlete be more aware of breaking at the knee and hip at the same time, helping regain the even knee to hip ratio throughout the squat. Upon reintroducing the athlete back to the barbell squat, the athlete was able to transfer the cues and patterning from the corrective exercises. Although it will take time for the athlete to ingrain a consistent squatting pattern, it is clear that the previous faulty movement pattern was due to a skill issue. Next up, we have the deadlift with a capacity issue. Viewing the deadlift from the rear view, we see that the, in the start position of the deadlift, the athlete has an elevated right hip. This could be due to the lack of mobility in the hip or hamstring. After clearing the initial restriction in the start position, the athlete is able to regain a level hip throughout the remaining portion of the lift. Backing up the statement that this is more than likely a mobility issue than a skill issue. As we analyse the deadlift from the side view, there is a posterior pelvic tilt causing the lumbar spine to flex creating a higher shear and compression force throughout the lumbar spinal region. Before any corrective exercises was given, further investigation is needed. Starting with the standing toe touch, it shows that the athlete lacks the range of motion in the hamstrings. Since this test is limited, the active straight leg raise was examined and the athlete displays adequate range of motion in the left in comparison to the right. This could be the cause for the athlete to have an elevated hip in the start position of the deadlift. Although the athlete lacks appropriate external rotation of the hip, there is an increased range of motion in the left hip in comparison to the right. Following on, the athlete was instructed to increase mobility of the hamstrings and hips. The athlete was giving rack assisted leg lowers and stiff leg bear curls to help increase mobility of the hamstring, while the elevated pigeon stretch was given to improve mobility of the hip. It was also suggested that the athlete perform dowel ordeals as a feedback mechanism to re-pattern the hinge and a quadruped hold with a pelvic tilt so the athlete can gain better control of the lumbo pelvic region. Moving on to the deadlift with a skill issue. Viewing the deadlift from the rear view, there is a greater external rotation of the right ankle in comparison to the left. Although we have prior knowledge to a limitation in ankle mobility, after analysing the athlete's squatting pattern, it's hard to notice any issues in analysing the movement from the rear view. Next, viewing the athlete from the side view, you notice that the athlete starts with her hips too high. In doing so, as she initiates the movement, the bar has to swing forward. This is now causing excess loading on the lumbar spine. Although we are aware of the athlete's previous capacity limitations, the approach to repattern the deadlift through cues and feedback was taken to see if the athlete's suboptimal movement strategy was due to a skill issue. First, we used a wall hinge with the cue to squat in the final portions of the movement to help with lowering the hips. Then removing the feedback from the wall, the athlete repeated the deadlift with the dowel with the cue to ordeal squat, squat ordeal. Within the same session, we reintroduced the deadlift, but with a lighter load to see if the athlete could transfer the cues and movement pattern under load. We see that the athlete was successful in implementing the new adopted movement pattern. Lowering the hips, she was able to keep the bar closer to her center of mass reducing the loading of the lumbar spine and executing a more optimal movement pattern, giving evidence that the previous suboptimal movement strategy was due to a skill issue. In summary, although a skill issue can be addressed immediately through cueing and feedback mechanisms, it will take time through proper loading and tempo to ingrain a new stable attractor state. Athletes can present with a capacity issue and a skill issue, but further investigation is important to determine the main limiting factors that are causing the suboptimal movement pattern 
For example, Athlete Day presented with a capacity issue limiting her squatting pattern and a skill issue was the main cause for a suboptimal moving pattern in the deadlift.